Hello, everybody. So today I wanted to share with you and discuss another um, interface for ChatGPT. It's called Perplexity AI. So I'll share my screen. Okay, so um, here you can see um, uh, two windows that I have open here. Uh, one is just Google for Perplexity AI, uh, which I've just Googled, so I'll just click on the link. And before I click on the link, you can see that it's something that you can also install on your mobile device, on your iPhone or your Android uh, device. I'll just put Perplexity. So there you have Perplexity. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare this interface with ChatGPT with ChatGPT itself, which is on the right. So what perplexity is, is it's an interface for uh, ChatGPT, and it's supposed to make asking questions easier, right? So here you can see some uh, suggested questions. You can ask it about sports. What are the five most popular sport games? You can ask it about decoration. You can ask about Elon Musk, so on and so forth. You can ask it anything just as you would ask Google something. Okay, so let's pick something uh, from arts and humanities, a very generic question uh, for a topic that I'm familiar with. Let's just say, uh, explain uh, postmodernism. So a very generic uh, question that um, is easy to answer if the, um, the considering that um, ChatGPT has scraped the internet um, for the state of, of which is a, a common conversation or a common debate in arts and humanities. Okay, so there we have it. There we have a, an answer that says, postmodernism is a late 20th century movement in Western philosophy characterized by skepticism, subject, subjectivism, or relativism. Okay, let's see what does if we ask the same question uh, in ChatGPT, what does it ask? It says, postmodernism is a philosophical and cultural movement that emerged in the mid 20th century and has a significant impact on various fields, including art, literature, architecture, sociology, and philosophy. It's complex and multifaceted, characterized by rejection of traditional modernist beliefs. Okay, that's quite good. Um, what, but as we know, um, ChatGPT doesn't cite. So that's one of the strengths of this interface, uh, this API interface with ChatGPT. Uh, it does give you the citations. So for example, uh, with this first sentence, if you clicked on the um, on the citation, uh, on I guess what would be considered uh, an endnote of some kind, it tells you, if I click on it, it tells you it's getting the information from um, uh, this uh, entry in uh, Britannic, Encyclopedia Britannica over here, but it doesn't actually tell you exactly where. It just says it's it's um, it's getting uh, that citation or that explanation from that citation. I mean, from that URL. Um, what's interesting is if, here, if you read the second sentence here and explain postmodernism, it says it's an intellectual stance or mode of discourse characterized by skepticism toward the grand narratives of modernism, rejection of epistemic certainty or the stability of meaning, and says sensitivity to the role of ideology in maintaining political power. And we click on that. Yeah, so that takes us to the Wikipedia entry. Um, and that is actually quite um, similar, right? If you read this first sentence in the Wikipedia entry, it says, postmodernism is an intellectual stance or mode of discourse characterized by skepticism, so on and so forth. Uh, and if we go back to this, it is an intellectual stance or mode of uh, discourse characterized by skepticism towards the grand narrative. So that is almost verbatim. Uh, to this sentence right here. And since, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's useful in the sense that um, it's saying where it derives the, um, uh, it derives the information from, and it does give you the citation. However, you have to kind of look for it on that page because it's not traditionally citing it the way we would in, APA or MLA or Chicago style. It's not putting it into quotations 
Um, and so I think it, it, on the one hand, it's you can see that it's superior to chat GPT for academic or scholarly purposes. And yet at the same time, it's lacking because um, it's also not telling you exactly what it's quoting and from where this information is derived. It tells you the URL, but it doesn't tell you where on that entire page. I mean, um, that's just a coincidence that 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 um, this part is uh, here is right at the beginning. Uh, but as you can see, this page on postmodernism is quite long. Um, so uh, you wouldn't you would have to dig for it. And also, I think what is interesting when you do look at the citations is the Britannica Encyclopedia, uh, sorry, Wikipedia. And number three is another encyclopedia. It's the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. So that that's probably more scholarly and that I think would be useful. What is the fourth citation here? The Conversation, which is, uh, you know, it, which is a, a journal or an online journal. Um, often um, academics are asked to write more popular um, editorial pieces for uh, the conversation. So again, not scholarly. And then the last citation, Owlcation. Um, I'm not familiar with this journal. Um, but again, not, uh, not a scholarly journal in that sense, uh, but certainly maybe it's interested in and here are the, the citations at the bottom. Maybe it's interested in finding citations that are more maybe um, uh, user-friendly to a more general audience, perhaps. Maybe that's it. So let's ask another question. Let's uh, um, ask the one that is uh, proposed at the bottom here. I just clicked on the, the it's kind of the default question. Here's another question. How does postmodernism challenge traditional notions of truth and reality? Let's pop it up. I'll post it in over here on this side. And we'll see what, um, what we get from ChatGPT. Oh, very similar. Yeah, so that's not a surprise because it is using uh, ChatGPT under the hood. So here on the left in perplexity, it says postmodernism challenges traditional notions of truth and reality by rejecting the idea of objective truth and the stability of meaning. Here, uh, uh, Wikipedia, uh, sorry, ChatGPT says postmodernism challenges traditional notions of truth and reality by questioning the existence of objective universal truths and instead emphasizing the subjective and socially constructed nature of knowledge and reality. And then here, and then uh, ChatGPT decides to kind of create these kind of four bullets uh, language, context, fragmentation, skepticism. Okay. Uh, over here in perplexity, it says postmodernism challenges. So it's almost identical, that sentence. The second sentence is postmodernism affirms that truth is a conceptual construct. Also it was similar that the word construct is repeated. Uh, an invention of human beings rather than an objective reality. The, the term objective reality also comes up. So they're very similar. It's blended in a, in a slightly different way. And again, the citations are here. <laughs> One is the Bible, um, two um, is an article, I guess, that's available online by Craig Rustbolt um, about the basic concepts of truth and postmodernism. Uh, three, what is the citation? The National Library of Medicine. That's interesting. Um, it's interesting. Uh, usually, you don't think about questions around postmodernism in, rel in relating to healthcare. Uh, and then, lastly, let's uh, just click on four. Uh, another. Online, uh, it says CUNY, so City University of New York. Um, I don't know who's written it. Uh, we'd have to um, dig for that. Uh, oh, it's Introduction to Philosophy by Philip um, A. Pecorino. All oh, right. So that that's not bad. I think it's interesting. The first question that we asked explained postmodernism. It tried to uh, find information from Britannia, uh, uh, sorry, from uh, the encyclopedic. Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, Wikipedia. Uh, I think there was also the conversation and then also um, a link to uh, a Stanford uh, a website that's through the university. And then in the second question, it looked at the Bible. It looked at uh, this um, the City University of New York, this philosophy talk, um, and uh, also um, um, 
this uh, chapter on on metaphysics um, by this um, uh, by this I guess uh, posting by Philip A. Pecorino, but I, it's unclear uh, who that is. Uh, but it is something that's uh, Creative Commons and, and posted for uh, general um, uh, for the general audience. Okay, so there you have it. I'm I'm uh, that's not, I'm not going to make a deep dive on per, on perplexity. But I'm trying to see if uh, it's useful for academic research. I mean, I think it's it can be a, a start, but I'm not so sure what is the value of asking the similar questions that you would ask ChatGPT. It gives you the citations or the links to pages from which the information is derived and from which it blends the sentences and the paragraphs. But it it never really uh, it never really takes you towards, if you will, a more academic or scholarly uh, perspective in the sense it doesn't take you towards uh, specific academic journals or specific academic texts. So in that sense, this could be excellent, I think, for high school, maybe even first year, but not so useful for any more advanced research. Um, and I think this also points to the other question around using these types of, if you will, AI-enabled search engines to do your research because it doesn't really give you much grounding in the context of the conversation. I guess we could ask, well, let's see, uh, give me more context about this uh, thing called postmodernism. Let's see how it handles that. I was gonna ask it a different question, but. Uh, yeah, it says it's a social movement. It's it's best understood as a questioning of ideas. Okay. Again, um, useful, I think, in the sense that you could have a conversation with it and it could be your tutor in, in the sense of helping you um, get a kind of a general lay of the land or of the debate. Um, but I think that's not really that different than uh, what ChatGPT gives us uh, its own kind of plain version without this API on top. Um, yeah, so I don't know how useful it is. I think it's it, it can be obviously useful um, for, uh, for summarizing and for writing even. Uh, and that of course, um, uh, takes you into the area of academic integrity, whether you're plagiarizing or using something that uh, is thinking and writing for you instead of you doing it yourself. Um, certainly, it can be understood as, as an assistant or as a co-pilot. Uh, but is it a good co-pilot? Is it a good assistant for your writing? I haven't asked Perplexity to help me do any writing. This is just a sort of um, simple uh, query on how it could perhaps help me understand the topic. I do think it's useful. Uh, would I use it? Probably not. Um, again, I would be much more interested in using something like ChatDoc or ChatPDF or Humata, uh, which allows you to query a specific document that you that you provide. Uh, and I've and I've talked about that in the past, and there's other videos if you want to watch those. But I think this is not as useful in the sense that um, it's not. Uh, you're not able to challenge or question or query a specific document. So you don't really know where the information is coming from. Yes, perplexity does give you these citations, but who is Pecorino? <laughs> who is writing that Stanford document? Um, is it that useful uh, to read the Wikipedia kind of very, or the Encyclopedia Britannica entry? Not that interesting. It doesn't really give you, uh, I think, a substantive um you, you you're not you're not uh pulled into i think the 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 center of the conversation or the debate around uh, this question postmodernism it can be of course a very good beginning but um i think quickly um you could actually become more and more how do i say confused i think by the queries right if we keep asking it more and more questions and um and, and, and we're given kind of very general um, information. Okay, so is perplexity in the end useful? Yes, it can be useful uh, for someone who's just starting out and it could be a great, if you will, 
chat GPT uh, sort of adjacent tool uh, because it does give you the citations which chat GPT does not. So it, it is useful in the sense you could read more in the Encyclopedia Britannica, you could read more from that uh, philosopher um, Pecorino, you could read more in the, uh, the Stanford website, you could read more, et cetera, from the citations. But um, but are they, this is the question, are those the useful citations? It, it did go to that, um, uh, that other uh, encyclopedia. But I'm not sure, you know, reading the conversation, the debate in the conversation or the editorial, is that useful for, say, a student? Uh, but again, for high school, absolutely, maybe even first year. But certainly, I think as you um, get into your second, third, and fourth year of university, uh, perplexity AIs can give you these citations. But ultimately, it's it has all of the, if you will, problems that are uh, still, uh, uh, you know, particular to uh, generative AI and, and to ChatGPT in general. Okay. Thanks very much. Hope that was helpful.